Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. So I am really excited to chat with my guest today and let me introduce you to her. Her name is Aubrey Nichols and she is a self-proclaimed self-love advocate and that's what we're going to talk about today. But Aubrey is also a writer and has written for The Week, Elite Daily and The Observer and she has a memoir coming out soon titled Enough. Um, but she has worked with Fortune 500 companies such as Olay and Disney and Apple as a brand strategist. But the real reason why I love Aubrey's story and who she is so much is because of her honesty and authenticity. And she speaks so openly about her journey with an eating disorder and addiction. And these are really the conversations that we have to start having so that we can strip away those feelings of being ashamed about who we are and our past. So thank you so much, Aubrey, for being here. Oh, it's such a pleasure. It's such an honor. It's always just nice to like break up the day of the podcast to bring you back to like what's really important. Yeah. And so the work that you're doing is so important. And if anyone doesn't follow you on Instagram, they should be because you just keep it real. And that's what's so fun. Uh, I mean, on any given day, you can kind of click on your story and you'll be there being like, you know what, guys, this day sucks. <laughs> or, you know, it's a struggle. So can you share how you went from self self-loathing to self-love because I know that that's something that you speak about yeah um for me um you know it was there was like voices in my head that always was telling me I was I wasn't good enough and I'm talking at three years old at six years old I was the first um of three daughters born in Houston Texas I went in the I remember looking down at my thighs in the kindergarten bathroom and thinking they were just too big. Oh. And from that age, you know, I danced with the scale, moved carbs around the plate, um, counted calories, um, anorexia, bulimia were all part of my story, over-exercising. Mm. Um, I mean, just, I don't, you know, that was part of my story. Then sort of, that is hard to manage. Then. Mm then sort of got into drugs and alcohol, then unavailable men. Then at 35, you know, I sort of managed to get a semblance of a life together. And I met, and I went on a date with this guy. He, I was 35, he was 30, 41. And I just thought it was time. And so I walked down the aisle to a man who I could thought he could love me for me. You know, I had spent a lifetime with my, filling my insides with the outside. And finally, I thought I would be enough, that I would be happy, that I could hand over my emptiness and um, to him. And, you know, three years into the marriage, I had, you know, a loft in Soho. I, I had a home, a camp in the Berkshires. We had like the trappings of all the things that would make you happy, jumping in pink diamonds. And I was the most miserable version of myself. Yeah. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. And it was walking into Equinox. And one day I was still like striving to be the skinniest, most the perfect version um, for all this world to see. And I was like, you know what? I can't do the seven miles on a treadmill today. I'm exhausted. So I went to a dance class and I walked in. All these people were smiling and dancing. And the song was Rachel Platten's fight song. This is my life song. This is... Um, my fight song, I, I take back my life song. And I just looked in the mirror and started bawling. And that was my moment. Yeah. That was my moment. And from then on, I was just, I decided something had to change. And, you know, it's so interesting because everyone thinks that there has to be like something wrong with the marriage for them to walk away from it. And I have kind of a similar story when my first marriage, like there was nothing wrong with it. He, you know, my ex was a good man. And so why was it not enough? And, you know, for me, I turned that inside to say like, what's wrong with me that that's not enough. And like, what's going on. And you know, th this has been a journey. I think we're a similar age where you get to the point where you, you look back and you say, it's okay for just fine to be not enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, 
what I'm learning as I really learn to like love and honor and value myself and like, and then my actions are aligned with that belief um, is that I could only potentially, well, first of all, my ex, it, it, it's my self-love journey is not about him at all. He right. was just one of my things I consumed to try to make me feel better, to try to soothe this disease that I'd always felt. But um, I am only, he was my emotional equal, but I'm only able to receive love. Um, I have to give myself that love first mm, yeah. because I, am, I can't expect to like, like be showered with love if I don't shower myself with love first um, because I have to believe that I'm worthy and deserving of that love. And I mean, that's where I am now in my journey. It's just... Yeah, exercising, just really um, driving home that that uh, driving home the fact that I am, am deserving of that love because the voices of self loathing run deep. They are a well oiled machine. Yeah, I mean, you talk about it starting when you were a toddler, practically. So yeah. how how do you flip that script if you've spent your entire life of self-loathing? And I don't know anyone or specifically a woman out there who doesn't have some form of self-loathing in, in some respect. I mean, how can we not when the media is telling us, you know, we're supposed to look a certain way and we're supposed to be a certain weight and we're supposed to not have that many wrinkles. I mean, we're trained to self-loathe. Yeah, I think so. Um, for me, the big part about it, um, the biggest shift um, from the get-go was affirmations paired with movement. So embodied affirmations. Um, also just journaling. So taking, you know, being the witness of my thoughts, taking what I'm thinking, putting them down on paper, separating myself from the thoughts, knowing that the thoughts that I'm thinking. And for me, um, my thoughts are... Um, how, you know, how much do I weigh? I don't, I, you know, I, I weigh too much. My face shape isn't correct. Um, it's like my eyes are hooded. I'm getting jowls like my mom. Mm. Um, uh, why don't you go get on the scale again? Yeah. You know, those are, that's, in, so that's, and that's very alive for me right now because in COVID, those thoughts have been like, guess what? We're back. Right, right. <laughs> it's time to work on us again. Um, and, um, so journaling meditation really, and that was a huge driver for me or a huge sh shift for me, being able to be quiet with my thoughts and not judgment, judge them and see them as thoughts. Mm. Um, and just be able to be alone with myself. Yeah. And you that's know? a hard I mean, one. It is. It is. I mean, the first solo vacation that I took. I went to surf camp in the Dominican. Oh my gosh, what a dream that would be to oh. go on right now. Oh, I know. <laughs> Take me away, whatever. <laughs> I would go with all the self-loathing thoughts that I had. I would go. Yeah, right. I would go with anything. <laughs> I'm like, no, but literally, like, I, I don't know if this is on video. Are you on video? Are we on it video? It is. Yeah, we are. Okay. So, like, I had one of these, like, little bands you know, these like workout oh, yeah, yeah. bands. Yeah. Okay. So like, I had never been alone with myself, but I was like, you know, family, I'm not coming home for Christmas. I'm going to go spend some alone time. That was the worst trip I've ever had in my entire life because I had no idea how to be with myself except by beating myself up. Uh, yeah. So it, yeah. So like I took the, when I, I like exercised the whole time. <laughs> because it was awful. And it's just like, I criticized myself the whole time and I watched what I ate. Mm -hmm. And it was like, those were the voices that have kept me company all the time. And now that's not my experience of being with myself. I actually have fun with myself. I know how to smile. I know how to laugh. I like do arts and crafts. I do, I cook, I make flower arrangements. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it, that was five years ago, but it takes time, you know? I, and I think that that's why people who are going through a divorce um, really struggle. It's that fear of being alone. 
It's like, what am yeah. I going to do with myself? You know, when I got divorced and I didn't have my son every other weekend, those weekends were awful. Like those were the ones that I was sitting by myself crying, not knowing what to do with myself. But I mean, there's so much growth in those moments too. It, it's such a learning experience to learn that I had no idea how to be by myself, you know, and it's, I'm 43 years old and I finally figured it out. And, you know, it's definitely a journey. It's not something that's just like, oh, okay, I'm by myself and this is good. And I'm going to, you know, meditate and light a candle and have a bath. And it, the, totally. the struggle is there. Yeah, I really, I relate to that. And I even find that um, when I, it, it's, when there's someone else, it's easier to project to what you're feeling onto them. You know, for me, I was doing another podcast I don't know, a week ago and the woman's like, do you have any um, advice for single women out there who are quarantining or any single people who are quarantining? I go, find someone to blame. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> and I'm like, because I realized when I was quarantining with this newlywed couple that I was just temporarily living with, um, wow, I blame them for everything. <laughs> I made them parents. I projected all this stuff on them. And then when I got out of quarantine, I was like, okay, here's what's really happening. You're still struggling with this. I was still struggling with um, hateful mantras when I looked in the mirror. Mm. I was still very much rooted in getting my worth and my value based on the reflection that I saw in the mirror. And that was very much tied to um, my self-love. And so when all the things were taken away that made me feel beautiful, my highlights, my nails, my clothes, being dressed up and going somewhere, my, right. you know, waxing, um, brows, when all of those things were stripped away, I, it was a lot harder to love myself looking like that. So I had to really double down on the mirror work self-love and starting and in, in really work to um, build the affirmations that when I look in the mirror um, to affirm myself for not what I look like but who I am I love your curiosity I love your vulnerability I love that your ability to take risk I love how resourceful you are and so that's what I've been doing in quarantine and so do you actually speak those words out yeah. or are you just thinking them to yourself yeah, well, I hired a coach because I was like, oh shit, I'm <laughs> hating on myself mm. in a major way now. And this coach has really helped me three minutes of this mirror work. And, um, and I'd like to say that I've done it every day and I haven't, um, but I, I've been fairly consistent with it. I've definitely had a practice, you know, 30 minutes to an hour every day of getting still. And I think everyone can relate to that because in quarantine, like we're all getting a, a, a little, um, a, a little fluffier and we, you know, <laughs> our, our edges are a little, uh, you know, can be ruffled a little quicker. Our kids are getting on our nerves and like, there's so much going on. And so it's so easy to be like, I'm so not happy with myself right now. Like my jeans don't right. fit. My hair is, looks awful. Like my nails are all raggedy. And, you know, and so what do you do with that? And I love that exercise of actually being so intentional about it and like forcing yeah. yourself to find that mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, God bless the moms. I just got off the phone with my sister and she has three kids. She was oh like, my God. I space these kids all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel for the parents with young kids. <laughs> She's like, it's this two-year-old that's killing me. She's yeah. Like, she like, she is so fast. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, so I have a teenager, so I can kind of like shoo him away, but like yeah. the, the ones yeah. with the little ones, oh my God, my heart goes out to them. <laughs> I know. I know. And she said, oh my gosh, my, and my nanny, she didn't have a full-time nanny, but she does have a, a nanny and she goes, her nanny, um, got, has COVID. <gasps> so not only like, is she, is she probably have it, but she has to go she's going to be without help so anyway there's just i was actually calling her to invite her to like come out to the desert and like mm. be free with me but 
that's not going to happen. And so that's a great point. You are living in the desert right now <clears throat> by yourself in, in yes. a pandemic. So has that kind of messed with you? Because I would imagine it, the pandemic itself is best with everyone. And then you're further isolating yourself. Well, okay. So yes, except I'm not <laughs> because it's way laxer here. Um, well, and that doesn't people social distance, but there's a lot of outdoor space. So there's outdoor yoga, there's outdoor eating, there's, um, outdoor concerts so that I've gone to every week. Um, going to the store is a lot easier. Mm. Um, it's just easier. I never have to wait in line. Making friends is a lot easier because I just moved from, you know, New York recently, well, then San Diego, then now to LA. So LA, I really have no friends. <laughs> right. So it's a lot easier to meet people because there's a lot of Los Angelinos out here quarantining. Oh, um, and the way that you can do that is like fairly, sim- I mean, it's pretty simple just to meet people. There's like only one thing going on per weekend, like the farmer's market, um, I can meet people there. So I've just met a few people and then I'm quarantined. There's a woman who's renting to me. She's next door. So it actually is, was by design that I moved here. Um, and now I'm just needing a little bit of change. So I'm thinking, I want to go back to LA. It's the water. I feel oh, like yeah. my, I'm not getting circulation and in August it's going to be like 110 yeah. degrees and I just need to, I need a little bit of like city. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get yeah. that. So yeah. I want to talk about writing a little bit because we are both writers sure, yeah. and you have a memoir that um, you're working on or is coming out soon called Enough. So what is the inspiration for that? So it- Enough is, um, first, I'm shopping it to agents. Um, I've just kind of taken a hiatus on that since a lot of agents haven't been reading, um, or maybe there have. I just needed to make some revisions on um, my proposal. And it's titled Enough, How I Stopped Searching, Starving, and Striving and Became the Woman of My Dreams. And it's just based on my story, you know, the retrospective of all the way back, filling my insides with all the way, um, with the outsides, all the way to marrying Adam, um, to that eventual divorce process, and then my life today. That That's that's fabulous. Do you find writing is really an escape? It's almost like I say that when I start writing and I'm in the zone, it's like yoga to me. Like I come out oh, so yeah. energized. Yeah, it is. Um, it's been hard for me to sit down and do it. Um, it is, um, it's just, it's like been this battle and I've like turned to prayer, Mm. praying to God to help me run to the page. Like I used to, I think, um, after getting published and working with editors and starting to pitch magazines, um, and having like some success, but not a lot, it has turned writing into a different experience for me. Yeah. It's Um, a tough industry. Yeah, it is. I mean, and also like I am working on a project full time right now. So it's like, I just don't have a lot of energy for it. And I I think I don't give myself a lot of grace because I act like, you know, even though I'm working full time, I still should have the same amount of energy to, to write. But for me, my process is, I don't know about yours, but it takes a lot of time mm-hmm. to write. Yeah. 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 I, I don't write in small chunks. It's either I'm spending four or five hours or I'm not doing it. So I'm not a good, yeah. like, oh, a half hour here or an hour there. Like I need to kind of like get into the zone into that, that place. And so for anyone who's not, um, familiar with the writing industry and how it works, it is, it is filled with rejection. And so like, it's really, you know, it has to be a, uh, something that you do because you're passionate and you love it because there's so much rejection and criticism behind it. And I would imagine that that also for you, and I know it certainly was for me, it, it kind of takes a toll on you because then you start saying, I'm not a good mm. enough writer. You know, That's you start right. playing those mental games. So Okay. So here's the weird, crazy thing about me. I mean, I don't know if it's like entrepreneur or 
it's like, it's from my father. I know it, but I love getting rejection. Oh no, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. weird. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I'm like Oprah magazine. No, they read my pitch. They read my essay, you know, and I actually fi am finding that the pitching process, I'm, I know I can write. I mean, people may not like it, but that's okay. Like I'll find an editor that does, but it's about how to pitch my idea hmm. that I still haven't nailed. And it's yeah. taken me a long time. So I'm trying to figure out how to pitch my idea, get and start establishing relationships with a couple editors and then write for them. Right. Right. You know, I had it before, so I know it's possible. Um, and, um, yeah, I really, I really do enjoy that a lot. Well, I, it, I, I can laugh at it, but there was a rejection that I got that I was so excited about because it felt like it was like such a detailed rejection. And I'm like, oh my God, I was so close, which tells me like, well, okay. It. Um, it was with the big publisher for, um, I have an agent and we have a mystery book out on submission and we got a rejection from one of the big publishers. It, but it felt like, like I was so excited about it. <laughs> and my agent was like, well, it is a rejection. I'm like, yeah, but still <laughs> it meant that well, it no, was in front of somebody. No, totally. I mean, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, and kudos to you for having an agent. I haven't had an agent yet. So that is like what I'm really hell bent on finding. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I had like 120 rejections. So yeah you know, then one luck, one person was <laughs> kind enough to say, okay, I'll represent you. So we'll, we'll see if uh, she regrets that down the road, but I know, right? it's definitely a process. So um, it, to wrap this up, what tips do you have for somebody who's really struggling, um, maybe at a transitional point in their life, trying to figure out the next steps and they're really um, uncertain and overwhelmed and doubting like, okay, now what? what, where do I go from here? Well, I would first, if anyone's, if you're listening, I would say, you know what, just take a, you know, take a deep breath, know you're exactly in the right place. Like it's, this is a universal timing. You know, there is no, mm. you're not behind. Um, yeah. You're on the exact right timeline. And then how about this? Download Insight Timer and just try to use, do a meditation like for five minutes because the answers are all inside us. Yeah. They're not outside of us. And if we get quiet, if we know how to like, just continually turn inward and um and 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 do it often as much as you like and just ask, and ask you know yeah. ask the question that you're wondering there and and don't worry about the how but it's in the willingness it's in the willingness to listen for the answers that they will be given to you and it's like in the shower, maybe you'll mm. see a, a roadside sign, yeah. you know, maybe a, you'll meet a person in the grocery store who will give you the answer. Um, but they will be provided to you. I promise you that. Yeah. And you know, some people, I love all of that and I believe all of that. And some people will be like, well, that's a little woo woo, but it's not. And I think it's such a good point that if you just sit with yourself and kind of mute all of the noise around you, all of those external forces, you will find exactly what you're, what you're looking for. And it's, you know, it's never failed me. Once you turn yeah, off everyone else, it's great. Yeah. Advice. And do what makes you feel most alive right? Whatever like sets your world on fire, like go do that, you know, and you, by being, because that's when you're going to be your truest self. And when your truest self is, you know, your highest self is present. And this is definitely woo woo, but this is the person that you're supposed to be. This is mm -hmm. stripped down without the, the yes. you know, without all of the, like the shields and the cloaks and the fear and that is your, the true essence of who you are. Um, and, you know, that we, you'll, you'll be open to the answer. So that's what I would say. Yeah. I would I, say, get quiet, go inward, and, but trust that you're in the right place and asking the right questions. That, that's great advice. So where, 
what's your journey look like next? I know that this is like not the end for you. It's just the beginning. You have so much yeah. that is coming out. Yeah, you too, girl. I mean, I'm going to actually go back and see my family in Houston and so in Texas. So hot spot to hot, hot spot. Tickets are like 150 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe the tickets to the Dominican will be really cheap. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I'm just going to get fed and nourished and do mm. some nourishing myself. And, and, um, you know, I think, Oh God, I think it'll be so good. I can't wait. And then, um, I'm going to get back to LA. I love LA. I love being there and just can't wait till the city opens up again. And, um, hoping that I'll be able to jump back in, you know, better than ever. Right. And if someone wants to follow you and everyone should, because like, seriously, your, your Instagram kills it. I mean, it's so oh, okay. super Thank inspiring you. and refreshing. Like, I think that's the Thank best you. word for it because it's just so honest. Where do we find you? Um, so I serve up self-love with all the realness and a few f-bombs so stop by if you dare it's aubrey.nichols a-u-b-r-e-e dot nichols n-i-c-h-o-l-s -E -E and from there you can find my website which has like links to writing um definitely if you heard me here um hit me up in my dms and so we can connect um yeah but i'd love it i'd love to see you and i'd love to keep serving up self-love, you know, as, awesome. as I experience it. And we all need some more of that. You can never have enough. So as always, the show notes and um, uh, your contact information will be there in the notes. So thank you so much for spending this uh, time with us and sharing your journey with us. I'm so grateful and honored that, um, that you sat and chatted with me today. Yeah, much love. Thank, thank you. you.